Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today, exciting day, working on the horizontal boring mill restoration project, and a uh, crate came back down on freight from me from up in uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and we had sent the table for this machine off to uh, Kinetic, uh, which is a grinding shop up in the Milwaukee area. I've worked with them in the past. They ground my planer. They ground uh, beds on a 10 double laid for me. Do outstanding work. And uh, I just keep going back to them. Cash Masters up there is a the gentleman that I've dealt with. Been absolutely awesome to deal with. He is a expert machine rebuilder himself, an expert scraper. He does all the work on keeping their grinders and stuff inside their shop, uh, all in great shape. Maybe I shouldn't say he does all of it, but he's kind of the, 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 the ringleader behind it all, might be a better way of saying it, uh, but real professional when it comes to machine rebuilding and really has good insight. I trust him to do my work. So we sent that up, it has come back, and uh, we're gonna be doing unpacking here, unboxing, and uh, I think what I'm gonna do uh, is just kinda set it over here onto uh, the cross slide, uh, the saddle, and just kind of see how everything looks. Now, I'm just gonna go ahead and say up front that uh, I will need to put some turkite, which is some wear strips, to kind of build up the area that they ground off of this on the, the table before we do it for real, but I do wanna just kind of mock it up and just see what it looks like, and uh, I'm excited to do so. I hope you are as well, and we're gonna get in here and unbox her and see what's in there. So everything is uh, strapped to this pallet. Looks like they built up there uh, specifically for this. Got some bands on it, uh, which we can just cut off. I will say that when I sent it up, I, I strapped it to a pallet, uh, just a regular already pallet that I had. Uh, when they shipped it back, they custom built a crate for it. So uh, <laughs> they win the award on the better packing job. Uh, let's go ahead and get this out of there. Let me get this strapping out of here. And got some uh, lumber that I can reuse. Always nice. I seem to build a lot of pallets and crates and stuff, so. All right, they got a protective coating on there. And, whoa, look at that. What a beauty. All right, so that has been beautifully ground. Now, I asked them, they were at first, they were just gonna kind of kiss this, and just get it where it would uh, uh, chuck down or mag down on their big surface grinder, uh, because really the, the grinding that's important is on the other side of this, on the bottom. Uh, but I asked them to go ahead and give this a pretty good grind because I do want to use this as a surface plate uh, to kind of check my ways over there. So we'll scrape all this into the, to the uh, surface plate over there and and get it make sure it's perfectly flat and we're going to use this as a reference surface but you know obviously they didn't get every little thing out there's been some boo-boos <laughs> on this uh table in the past they could have ground all that out but you know it would have required taking another i don't know 16th of an inch off of the thickness of this and in the grand scheme of things it's just not gonna matter. I mean, my parts are gonna be bridging across that in most cases, or if not, I can position it where it will. I mean, with a table this big, you're not gonna be doing real small parts. So um, I'm not too worried about, you know, some of the stuff that's still in there. They got 90 plus percent of it out, probably 98% of it out. So I'm real happy with that, looks great. Let's see what we need to do to get this out of the box and picked up so that we can uh, take a peek at the bottom side of it. All right, so it looks like this crate is nailed together. So we'll get in here with a pry bar and uh, see if we can't get these uh, nails out.
All right. Looks like the uh, side pieces are nailed down to the bottom. No big deal though. I mainly wanted to get to the ends where I could get some T-slots in here and uh, we can pick that thing up. So what I got here are some T-nuts that fit into these T-slots. And I also have some eye bolts and we can kind of clamp that down and that's going to give us some uh, lifting points that we can pick the top of this, uh, pick this thing up out of here. We're using the gantry crane. So we'll just, uh, see, I'm going to go in about a third, try to keep my weight balance a little bit. <clears throat> I want these to be kind of pointing toward the center of the table. So I got that nut on there. We can adjust that. See this one here. So I want to come pointing about right there. Okay. Same thing on the other side. Come in about a third of the way. Get it down close to being tight and then we'll snug it up with the, the nut. One more time. All right. Give me four points to pick from and we'll get ready to pick this thing up. I'm going to pick these up using uh, some straps and I'll just use a clevis here to uh, come in here and go from the strap up to the or to that eye bolt. We'll use four of these, one on each one and uh, we should be ready to lift it up after that. Let's go ahead and do this one. another clevis here in the middle to pick them all up from. All right, I think we are ready for the lift here. Everything looks good. And we're coming up. We are clearing the, uh, the pallet. I don't think that's going to swing around and hit anything. I'm going to take it up here. Get it on up high enough, and I'm going to take a peek up underneath the bottom. Make sure it's going to be okay to set down. And uh, like I said, I just want to, right now, to just mock it up. I just want to see it. I'll let you guys look at this uh, ways on the bottom once we get a little bit later on and get it turned over. But uh, 
looks beautiful. Now this, uh, it's just the front on this side. Oops. So I need to get them lined up. down on there oh yeah starting to look like an HVM again oh yeah I'm liking it doesn't that look good man it's kind of even though I know this machine's not really back together yet it's looking like it's back together again and you know the, the end is in sight that is really exciting for me. All right, um, tell you what, let's uh, see if we can get this table flipped over. I wanna just take a good look at the waves up underneath the bottom. Uh, again, my plan will be to scrape this top end flat to my surface plate. This will fit on my surface plate. And then we can come in here and pick this up from the bottom, turn it 90 degrees and it will gap over the ways here and it'll just about do half and half so I'll probably print it in three prints and what that's going to help me figure out is how flat one side is to the other uh, as from a scraping and alignment standpoint we want these uh, tops to be flat right now those ways you know they could be whatever so uh, I just want to make sure they're in the same plane we'll be doing that we'll also be um, making sure they're scraped flat from end to end and uh, I've also got a little bit more adjustments that need to be done from an alignment standpoint in the scraping, but that'll be coming down the road. Uh, but we will be utilizing this and it'll have a nice scraped look up on the top of this table too, uh, which I think will look cool. All right, uh, let's see by getting it flipped over. Now we got it rigged here to pick it back up again. I'm gonna pick it up and we're just gonna set it over on those uh, blocks of wood on the ways and that should let me uh, flip this thing over and I think we can clear it there I think we can lower it down there. All right, let's take all the straps off. I'm gonna rig it from the bottom so that we can flip it over. Well, I think I missed uh, getting video I was flipping this over but I can't tell you what I did I put these two bolts or two eye bolts into some of the bolt holes in the bottom we put a strap over there and we basically just picked it up with the gantry set it up straight and then I adjusted the gantry picked it up where it was uh, lifted off of the wood I readjusted my wood pulled it back and then just lowered it down pretty straightforward uh, but we got it flipped over so let's come over here and take a look at it and see what it looks like so here we go you can see these are the ways that they ground in and um, they also kind of touched the tops here this is where that clamp bolts to that kind of grips up underneath the table and holds it all in place now a couple things here um, I am going to be putting turkite on this. Turkite is kind of a 
Teflon bronze embedded wear strip that's made for machinery ways. Uh, it's a synthetic material, but it's, it's very good and actually wears really well. In many ways, it wears better than cast iron. A lot of your newer machines, are they just build everything with turkite. The main reason I'm going to put turkite on here, though, is because after grinding this and after scraping the saddle and after scraping the bed, everything, every time we remove metal, it, it drops this top down a little bit at a time. And we want to try to kind of compensate and build that back up. So we estimated how much everything would have dropped uh, based on my scraping and based on my best estimations of wear. And then they also had to grind a certain amount off of this to get it to clean up. And uh, then we they took a little bit more than that to be able to get a certain thickness of turkite. And I've got in my notes what goes in here, but we're gonna be epoxying that in place. And then that will actually become what the, the ways are gonna ride on. So this is not gonna get scraped. Um, it's just gonna have that turkite in there. We'll actually scrape the turkite. Uh, it's a fairly soft material, but we'll still uh, scrape it for contact. Very similar like you would um, scraping cast iron. Uh, but anyway, I thought I'd show you this. One thing is that he did uh, leave a little, this, this grind here is a little bit rough. It's kind of got a little bit of texture to it. And he did that on purpose. It's flat, but it's got a little bit of texture to it. But that just kind of helps that uh, epoxy have something to grip, grip to. We'll probably actually come in here and rough this up. Uh, if you have a super slick surface, the epoxy doesn't want to stick to it. You got to have something for it to grip to. So uh, he did purposely leave a little bit of a rough grind uh, on these two surfaces in preparation for putting the turkite in there. But all in all, it looks beautiful. And what is important is, is that this surface and the top of the table have been ground within, I mean, they're probably within 10 thousandths of an inch parallel in every direction. So um, that saves me a tremendous amount of time if I was going to try to scrape all this stuff in by hand. Uh, it was such a large area and uh, it was just, it was going to be easier and more accurate probably to just send it out and have it ground. So uh, that's what I opted to do there. So anyway, there you go. Just a quick look at the table uh, back from grinding. Well, there we go. A little uh, unboxing and quick inspection of the work here uh, on my HVM table done by Kinetic Company. And I get a lot of questions from folks uh, that are getting ready to work on machines on where, you know, who, who is this company? How do I get in touch with them? Uh, if, if you're looking at having work like this done, you know, I, I highly recommend them. They're great. Yeah, there are other grinding companies out there. Uh, there are other grinding companies out there that do a great job of doing this kind of work. There are grinding companies out there that, that say they do a great job of doing this kind of work, but don't. Uh, the main reason that I keep going back to Kinetic is because I've used them in the past. I've gotten to know them personally. I, I actually was up there when they ground my uh, planer in. I was there watching the whole process. Um, Cash Masters is the, the guy that kind of runs it and he's got a, a grinder hand out there that this is what he specializes in. Uh, their company actually does industrial grinding for the making industrial knives for uh, like uh, toilet paper and, and paper cutting and things like that. Uh, but because of the number of grinders that they have and trying to keep the accuracy they have, they had to learn how to rebuild their own machines and they routinely rebuild those grinders. Uh, after so many hours of wear, they'll go in there and rescrape them, take them apart because they got to keep the accuracy on them. And they learn how to do this in the house. And as a kind of part of that, and because they are a grinding shop, uh, they've actually be also, in addition to their knife making business, they do a lot of custom work for machinery builders. So it's Kinetic Company, uh, K-I-N-E-T-I-C. Um, they are up in outside of... Uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Greendale, Wisconsin is actually the little community that they're in right there. Um, if you're interested in looking them up, they have a website. It's actually knifemaker.com. Uh, and if you go to knifemaker.com, they have a, a little section on there about uh, grinding machines and stuff. And uh, if you're interested in working with them, you can contact them through their website and uh, get more information, whatever, get an estimation on getting a job done, whatever it is. And, um, you know, I'm not going to say no job is too big for them, but they got some really, really big machines there to handle some really uh, large 
machines if you need that done or small stuff or whatever. So uh, reach out to them if you need some work done. Uh, they have been great with me and that is not a paid endorsement. They do not sponsor my channel or anything like that. I don't get any cash or money from them. Uh, they don't do this work for free. I'm paying them to do it, but I pay them because uh, I trust them and they, they do a great job. So there you go. Uh, guys, with that, that's going to be a wrap on this one. Uh, we'll be doing more work on this project down the road. Probably up next, at least for the table, is to get it scraped in, get the top scraped in flat over there. Uh, because we are going to be using it as a surface plate for all intent and purposes to help get this machine set up. Normally, you probably wouldn't have to do that, but I'm, I'm taking that extra step because we are going to be using it uh, as a surface plate. We'll be taking advantage of having that big area that's already been ground flat and it should scrape in fairly, very easily and we can use this as a good reference surface. So that'll probably be uh, coming up soon and finishing getting this machine tuned in so we can put her back together and get her back to work, which hopefully won't be too long in the future. So there you go. Uh, as always, guys, uh, thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit that bell icon up there to get notifications when new videos are posted. Uh, you can subscribe if you haven't already. Please do that if you haven't. And a uh, big, huge thank you again to all of my supporters out there who help out with the site. Again, you know, I had to pay to get this done and it was a lot of the, the money that you guys help out with the website and help out with the, the YouTube channel through Patreon, PayPal, et cetera, that really is allowing me to do this and uh, giving you guys the opportunity to watch and learn along the way. So with that, guys, uh, we're going to sign off. As always, again, thank you so much for watching.